Good evening. And welcome to the third Ward Church of Christ, midweek Bible study. We thank you for tuning in this evening. This evening we'll be coming from the text. We'll be coming from James chapter 2. But we want to thank you all for tuning in again today. We want to continue to keep our, those uh, who are sick among us this time, keep them in our prayers. And all those who are just going through things this time, we're here to make sure that we keep everyone encouraged to understand that God is in control through this pandemic. God is in control of everything throughout the world. At this time, we're going to open up with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, Father, we come at this time thanking you for this day. Thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you most of all, Father, for being God, sending your Son to die on the cross so we all may have a right to the tree of life. We thank you, Father, for our life, our health, and our strength, giving us one more opportunity today to get ourselves right with you. And, Father, we are thankful and we are grateful. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you give us every day. Father, this time we just come asking that you will be with all those who are sick among us throughout this congregation and throughout the land and country, especially those in the household of faith, Father. Just bless them at this time to be able to be restored back to a reasonable portion of their health and their strength. Father, we just thank you for just giving us breath, giving us the activity of our limbs to be able to move about in our daily life. Father, we also are thankful for those who are we ask that you to be with those who are less fortunate at this time. Father, bless them in a mighty way to keep them encouraged and to continue to help them to understand that they have to hold on to your unchanging hand. Father, we thank you and we love you for what you have done already, Father. We thankful for those things you're going to do. We love you, Father. We just thank you can continue to be with us here at Third World. We may continue to strive to be the beacon light in this community as you have us to be. Be able to show the world you through us, through our actions, through our involvement in the communicate in the community, Father. Just bless us to be able to sustain and do those things you would have us to do, to represent you and to glorify your name. We ask you to be with us as we go through this Bible study this evening, that we may encourage someone that everything we say and do will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This we ask in your daughter and son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about getting outside of ourselves. Getting outside of ourselves can be difficult because we're so used to being in our own comfort zone. And we look at things that are going on in the world today. Um, things with the economy the pandemic, injustices, and all those things that have an effect on many people. But we have to understand again, as we always say, God is in control and God allows what he allows. But what God wants us to do is to return back to him. So we're going to talk a little bit about getting outside of ourselves. Come from James chapter 2. James gives us some examples of how we can live outside of ourselves. We look at the George Floyd situation. It was a horrible situation. People are upset. People are angry. People don't know how to respond. Some people don't know how to respond in a situation like this. But I thank God that he has people who understand who he, who he is and know who he is to set the right example. But we as God's children have to understand that it's our duty to set the example for the world, to bring them to God. And I'm so thankful for the family of George Floyd who has shown strength, encouragement, and peace. Because that's what George Floyd stood for, peace. And 
in order to be able to show peace, we have to understand that we have to get outside of ourselves in certain situations. Situations that doesn't seem as though that you can handle or uh, prejudices, injustice. How do I handle it? Well, I want to help us to understand that we have to get outside of ourselves, meaning getting outside of ourselves, putting our differences aside, looking at what God wants, and applying that to our daily walk. James chapter 2 provides two illustrations that help us to define how we are to live outside of ourselves. The first illustration that he teaches in James chapter 2, he says that we need to move outside of our prejudice. We have to move outside of our prejudice. The Bible says, James chapter 2, he says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of person. My brothers and sisters, he says, how can you claim to have faith in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have favor with some people more than others? For instance, in verse 2 it says, suppose someone coming to your meeting place, dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in in poor dress clothes and shabby clothes. If you give special attention to the one, the rich person, and sit them in a good seat, but says to the poor one, you can stand over there, or else sit on the floor, well, does that show discrimination? But it says in verse number two, it says, for if that's someone that comes in your assembly, I want to read from a different translation, for if that's someone that comes in your assembly, a man with a gold ring in godly apparel. And there comes in also a poor man in vile remnant. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not being partial in yourselves and are become judge, judges of evil thoughts? In other words, showing respect to persons. God is not, does not show respect to a person. So James is telling us here that we have to be careful not to show respect to a person. By giving this illustration of someone who comes in dressed as we say in nice clothing and jewelry versus the one who comes in in shabby clothes and you allow the poor man to sit at your footstool and the rich man or the nice or the well-dressed person to sit in the good area. That's showing discrimination. That's showing partiality. And God does not want us to show favoritism. You see, favoritism literally means receiving the face. It is a Christianization of the Hebrew word for partiality. To receive the face means to make judgment about people based on their external appearances. And sometimes we're all guilty of making judgment based on the person's exterior, exterior appearance because they may look important. So we, we can associate ourselves based on our income, our social status, and we'll sometimes be guilty of showing partiality. But James is talking about not showing partiality because God does not allow or not approve of social, uh, partiality or discrimination. And in the world today, this is what we are facing when we have Partiality based on prejudice, based on race or religion or economic status or your income. 
God does not respect or allow or wants partiality. So we do this every day. If we really look at it and be real about our situation in life, we do this every day. Showing partiality in some way. But James is saying that we have to get out of that presence. Get outside of ourselves and understand that we are human beings that God has created. We are all God's creation. And God has created us all to be able to be unified to him through Christ Jesus. And James just used this illustration of clothing. Shabby is a word from the same root word that James uses in verses number 21 to characterize uh, sinful or filth. That Christians, we must put, put those type of things on. We have to put off showing partiality. We have to show that we love everyone. And it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of, of a situation that I, I, I've witnessed before where someone came into the assembly and um, there were certain people or certain ones that were kind of hesitant about receiving or sitting next to, we have to understand that we never know who we are entertaining, so you have to be careful about how you respond to people because you have to consider yourself because it could have been you. It could be your brother. It could be your sister. It could be your children. But God wants us all to love each other. So we cannot give special attention based on economic status, or income, or even clothing. But James here is teaching us about getting outside of ourselves, getting outside of our prejudices. You see, prejudice against the poor, it conflicts God's gracious activity on the part of the poor. In essence, prejudice is, veiled, is a veiled attempt to override God's actions of grace and on the part of the oppressed. So, you have to understand that there are people who are in certain situations, not by choice, but sometimes by things that have happened in their lives that have caused them to be able to, to, to be put in a situation. We have to understand that we have to love them in spite of, we have to learn how to encourage them in spite of. Going over, conversating, just sometimes an encouraging word can help someone. A handshake or even embracing a hug can help someone. So. We have to understand that we have to get outside of their mentality. We're to draw people to Christ and not drive them away from Christ. Looking at the situation with George Floyd, as I was looking at that and looking at the news every day, I'm realizing more and more how people are, a God-fearing people are, those who know God, uh, they're not allowing their skin color to cause them not to support injustices or prejudice. I see all ethnic backgrounds coming together for one purpose, for peace. Uniting together, no matter what their background is, for peace. And that's what we have to do as God's children. We, have, we are here to bring people together. No matter what your background is. Rich, poor, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. Whatever. We are to come together as one in Christ Jesus. But James says that we have to get over that prejudice. And he asked the question. He said... At the end of that verse, he says, are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of the evil thought? Ask yourself that same question when it comes to you in your daily walk with people, your daily uh, contact with people. How do you respond to certain people? You, you see people come up to a store and, and they, they don't look like you think they should look and they're coming and you, you know, as we call them, some people call them uh, panhandlers. Don't push people away. Sometimes, I understand that we are in a world where people are doing all kinds of things and 
uh, it, you're, you're hesitant of, uh, of certain things, but sometimes you have to be careful how you treat those people because God may be putting you in a position or in, 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 in place to be able to help that person. And what happens is he said, we will be able to see him in you. And so what we do sometimes, we'll, we'll, be, we'll back off. But James is saying we have to put off partiality. The Old Testament repeatedly stresses that God himself is impartial. Looking at the heart rather than the outside of a person. And that's the key. We have to look at the heart of a person versus the outside of a person. And God is saying that he himself does not like partiality. So what we do, we have to look at the heart rather than the outside person. And God's people are to imitate him in this respect. So as we move outside our prejudices, prejudice, prejudice based on appearance, we move into loving acceptance. Loving acceptance. Discrimination against others violates, violates the demand of love for our neighbor. The centerpiece of Jesus reinterpretations of the law of God. In verse 8, James 2 and 8 says, Yes, indeed, it is good when you truly obey our Lord's royal command found in the scriptures. He says, Love your neighbor as yourself. Some may ask the question, well, who is my neighbor? Your neighbor is not just the person who lives next door to you, but your neighbor is everybody that you come in contact with. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. James may be referring to Jesus' statement of a second grace command. However, it's probably more likely that he is going all the way back to Leviticus chapter 19 and verses 18. Love your neighbor as yourself. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know about you, but I don't know any person who really don't like themselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I don't know anybody who thinks rationally or, or of, a, of a sound mind that does not like themselves. Maybe I, I have to correct that. But anyone in their right mind love themselves. But when you say loving your neighbor as yourself, you may say that, okay, I have to, I do, I'll do this for myself, but I won't do that for them. You have to get outside of yourself to love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible says, James 2 and 8, Love your neighbor as yourself. If you, it says if you if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. See, the first part of that verse says, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. See, there are some things that we have to do. We have to, in order to fulfill that law, to fulfill the royal law then you have to love your neighbor as yourself. But if you have respect to person, it says you commit sin and are convinced of the law as a transgressor. You are transgressing against the law. Acceptance means you value others just as they are. You value people as they are. That's acceptance. They're not forcing someone else's idea on who they should be. You have to understand that you can't force people to be who you want them to be. You have to accept them where they are until the maturity parts come with them. You can't force people to be where you are. 
I mean, their ideas should be taken seriously. That what they think should be taken seriously. So what you have to do is understand that you can't force anything among them. They can talk about how they feel inside and why they feel that way. And some people, they really care. But what you have to do in order to be able to establish a relationship or get with them, you have to learn how to get outside yourself because the way you may feel may not be the way they feel, but you have to earn, learn how to understand how they feel. What I want to do is help us to get to the point to where we can get outside of prejudice based on income, economics, social status, and race. We're all created by God. And we're all trying to come together to be united back to God through Christ Jesus. And that's the key. How do we do that? Show love. What did Jesus show? Love. What did God show? God showed love. God showed love when he sent his son to die on the cross that we all may have a right to the tree of life. God gave his only begotten son for us who were sinful, who owed a debt that we couldn't pay. So God sent his only begotten son to pay that debt because he loved us so. And it was love that caused him to do that so we can be reunited with him. Today, let's, run, let's start getting outside ourselves to love those in spite of our situation, to love those in spite of our economic status, to love those in spite of our social status. I just want to give an encouraging word this, this evening. And I hope I help someone to understand how to get outside of themselves. We want to remind you for our communion pickup this coming Saturday. will be from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Communion pickup and offering drop-off will be from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock this coming Saturday. Also, again, our live stream will start Sunday morning at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. morning worship live stream this coming Sunday Call those, invite those to tune in to join in with us. And we look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. June 27th, we will have our graduation parade. June 27th at 4 o'clock, we will have our graduation parade starting here at the building at 2721 Malcolm Street at the Third Ward Church of Christ. That will be 4 o'clock, June 27th. We invite all those to come out to celebrate our graduates this year for 2020. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., look forward to seeing you. May God bless you, may God keep you. Also remind you to be joining on, on us with us tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. to 710 for our prayer line starts at 7 o'clock, 710. Our phone number is 713-609-1972. Prayer line starts at 7 o'clock Monday through Friday. Join in the morning. May God bless you, may God keep you. Have a great evening.